Some would say now that the Falcons have gotten that first dub out of the way, now the season has really started for them. And so they have their first true test. I, and for me, I call this the first true test because I felt like they hung with the Rams and we knew they were going to hang with the Saints and, of course, got the, the win with the Seahawks. But I feel like this is going to be one of the first tests and maybe more so than anything of the defense. So this morning, our guys, Hugh Douglas, of course, friend to the show, and John Fricky had defensive coordinator Dean Pease on their morning show. Take a listen to what Dean Pease had to say when he was asked the question about defense, but specifically about applying pressure. You know, you don't want to always have to pressure to try to get a sack, you know, because as soon as you pressure, you're putting a little more pressure on the back end because if we don't get there, there's going to be some holes or you're playing man coverage or whatever. You can't cover them forever. So you don't want to always do that. You want to be able to get uh, – we still like getting more pressure with just being able to rush for. But, hey, it is what it is. Wow, T. Yeah, lot yes. lots of impact there, but right. there, yeah. there, was, there were there was and that was just the the abbreviated version abbreviated version, yes. <laughs> the morning show uh, on ninety two nine the game, but I thought what it made me think of was you could go all over the place with this, but based on what Dean P said and based on what you know about that Browns offense, what do you think is the number one key? Just the number one key to getting a win against the Browns? I think it's gonna have to be run fits. Yeah. Um, because I got a chance to, you know, go back and look at some of the more some more of the film from the game against the Seahawks. Uh and I think there were some things just maybe where and a lot of times with when defense people like to throw the whole setting the edge thing out there. Oh, you gotta set the edge, but mm -hmm. a lot of times like you got it's a little bit more to it than that, right? Yeah. It's it's technique, it's mm -hmm. taking on the blocks the right way, or making sure I'm make I'm I'm squeezing my man down in the hole so he doesn't be able to slip up to the next level because just in mm -hmm. case I don't make the tackle, yes. my my homeboy is gonna be right behind me, right there yeah. waiting to get him. And, and that's that wasn't that happened several times against the Seattle Seahawks. That's why you saw the Seahawks go off in the mm -hmm. run game initially, and the, the Falcons got to a bad start. If the Falcons start like they did last week, T. Mm -hmm. Um, chubby baby is gonna take over. <laughs> like, it's, it's gonna be a long. It ain't gonna be no comeback. It is. It's not gonna be old. Oh, it's gonna be a boxing match or anything like that. It mm -hmm. is gonna get ugly because yeah. that's the biggest strength for the Cleveland Browns. Their mm -hmm. offensive line. They keep their running backs yeah. clean. I know yeah. that sounds weird <laughs> when you know you say you keep yeah. your quarterback clean. They keep right. their running backs clean. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in the backfield when their running back gets the ball. Most yeah. of the time, they don't get touched until it's the second level. You know what I mean? So that's the thing that the Falcons have to absolutely do is they have to be able to have their make to get those get in their run fits and making sure they're playing with each other and not trying to play hero ball and yeah. make tackles. Yes. And also you made an excellent point about not just Nick Chubb, but they've got to get ready for Kareem Hunt because mm. the Browns have a one, two punch. Oh my goodness. So you yes. really have to be ready and, and same styles, but then again, different styles because you have, you know, bruising and then you have speed, but then you have speed and bruising. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, what we used to call um, thunder and lightning uh, here yeah. for, for UGA. It's almost like thunder and lightning part two. So right. the, the that's, I think, the other piece that the Falcons have to be prepared for because in a typical offense, your goal is right to get a team to third and long because yep. you're thinking if you can win the battle of down and distance, then you're going to force them to throw the ball. And then that gives you an opportunity whether you want to blitz and get that quarterback uncomfortable, maybe pressure him to throw early, or if you want to make sure that all the the, uh, cat, the pass catchers or the receivers are man covered, then you're good to go. Not here. Because mm -hmm. here, they might have third and five, third and six, third and seven, and they're like, just give the ball to Chubb. Just give the ball no. to Hunt. Yeah. And they can slice you up the same way as another team's quarterback to his receiver or a quarterback to his tight end can slice you up. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think that the key to winning is to make, make sure that everybody, all 11, have understand their responsibility in contributing to stopping the run early. That's the point you made. I want to reiterate that early because once these guys go off and they start wearing you down, think about this, Jarvis. Cool stat. The Falcons allow the Seahawks' entire running back core and their quarterback to get a total of 112 rushing yards against them last week. Want to know how much, how many yards Nick Chubb had on his own against my beloved Steelers? 
15 yards. The dude all by himself yep. had more yards than the Falcons allowed a whole team to have last week. So that's really where it comes down. The other piece there is this. However, one thing we know for certain is that the Falcons offense is really, really starting to function on all cylinders. So right. when you look at the offense, and we'll take more of a deep dive into the offense tomorrow as well, but Indeed. just I, it, just for that high level eye test, what would you say maybe one small thing that they might want to course correct so that they can get off to an early start against the Browns? I, I think if just from a standpoint, play a clean football game. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, don't put the ball on the ground. Don't turn the ball over. How can how about that? You know, yeah. I think if the Falcons can play their first clean game, mm -hmm. I think they're going to set themselves up beautifully for yeah. to, to be able to get a victory against the Cleveland Browns. Because as much as I just said about the offensive line and, and how they, you know, they can get into a rhythm running the football mm -hmm. and then you get it to a point where they're doing play action and yes. the quarter, Jacoby Brissett is sitting back there having all day to throw the football because Dean P said, Hey, I don't want to send too many pressures. I'm going to put mm -hmm. back in my defense in too much trouble. Right. But I think that from offensively, you can help with that, right? Like yeah. if you're able to run the football, control the clock and yeah. their best defensive player is not going to be on the field. Right. You know, those are some of the things that you have to take advantage of. And I, and I believe, wholeheartedly you can do that by playing clean not putting the ball on the ground and not throwing the ball to the other team that the Falcons will set themselves up for easy not easy that's that's too that was, that was a little bit too far but they'll set themselves up really nicely if they don't if they play a clean football game yeah and everyone from the veterans on down on that o-line please no pre-snap penalties because that's another definition of playing a clean game is just hey, hey. and I mean better runs as well as those <laughs> all y'all all y'all all y'all because everybody, that, everybody. that also was something just a few you know don't want to nitpick because it certainly has gotten better than it was last year but mm -hmm. you can just keep away from pre-snap penalties that get you into a situation where maybe you could have had second and five or third and three but now you're at first and 15, that does really make it a challenge to continue to move the chains.